Hello, my name is Elise, and I'm a children's librarian at the Acton Memorial Library. I also work at the Needham Free Public Library and the Wayland Free Public Library, doing story times and dropping crafts, all in Massachusetts. I'm here today to do a family activity with you. It's called Potato Prints. These are very fun, very easy, and I think you will enjoy them, and kids can play with them and do this activity for a long time. The main thing you're going to need is paint and potatoes and paper. You'll need russet potatoes, which are really large, but I also used red potatoes and white potatoes, and I even found these great little itsy bitsy potatoes. Now, I had so many activities for potato prints that I'm actually doing two videos on it. This is the first one, and we're going to specifically be doing potato prints with cookie cutters. And let me show you these. These, and the main thing about the cookie cutters is that they have to be fairly small. If they're too big, they won't fit your potatoes. So I have a flower, a strawberry, a heart, an acorn, and I even have some very, very little paper, um, cookie cutters that um, I think were intended originally for hors d'oeuvres or canopy, canapes, and they work too. And so, this is what I'll be doing, and I'm going to show you now how to cut the potato. And for my first one, I'm going to begin with the russet, which is one of the biggest potatoes. And you can see, and I have a big knife, which I like to use, because you need to make one big cut. And what's important is that it be very smooth. If your knife moves a little, you will have an uneven surface. And when you put paint on it and then put it on the paper, parts of it will not show up. So I take this big knife and only parents and caregivers should do this part. And I'm just going to make one big quick slice. And I hope, and it looks like my surface is very even. Now, out of a potato this big, I can actually get two out of each size and out of each side. And so I'm going to cut these again. And the other thing I want to show you is potatoes have a lot of moisture. And so when you do this project, you want to have some uh, paper towels so that you can um, blot the potato on them and that will absorb some of the moisture which will make the paint adhere better to the surface and will be better for your final print. So this is what I do. I take this large surface and I'm going to choose one of my cookie cutters. Now the largest one I have is a strawberry and this one will fit. So I'm going to make a strawberry one. And what you do, there's two sides. One is a sharp edge the other is covered. So you are going to put the sharper edge into the potato and you press down with your palm. And sometimes I press it down on my paper cutter just to get it evenly in there. And now I take a smaller knife and I'm going to trim around the potato and the cookie cutter. And it's very easy. This comes off just like that. And there I have it. Now the next stage is actually probably can sometimes be the hardest. You have to remove the cookie cutter and it can sometimes be, and there's my surface and my potato. And I have a bunch of potatoes that are all ready. I've got a flower and a little flower. I have a heart. I have some small um, shapes, 
that were from the hors d'oeuvre cookie cutters. I have the acorn. I have another strawberry. And the, and I have a letter. Now some alphabet cookie cutters are way too big. This set I have, most of the letters will fit, but not all. And then you have to get your paper. And I like to use white paper, but any color will do. And what I usually do is I make a grid on my paper. I think it helps the children figure out where to place each cookie cutter shape. And it also helps me, but you don't have to do that. And I'll show you some examples. This is one where we just randomly place the cookie cutters. And you can see there's a heart, a flower, the strawberry, stars. And here's another sheet that was done very randomly. And I had a moon and a shamrock and so on. But today, I'm going to do ones like these, and I'm going to do it even more special. I'm going to use two different paints colors on some of the cookie cutters. And so, let me begin by showing you what we'll do next. I'm going to take my piece of paper with the grid, though that isn't necessary, and I think I'm going to do a little flower shape. I've got paint brushes that are just regular children's paint brushes. And here's my paints. I have a lot. Some of them are um, have glitter. So I have four that have glitter because that adds a nice sheen. I also have four silver, pewter, blue, and gold that have a metallic sheen. And then I also have four regular colors purple and blue, yellow, and orange. Now these are regular poster paints. All of these are washable. They're not expensive. You can buy them at a craft store and maybe even your local pharmacy in their office and school supply section will have these. And I said that we we're going to blot it on the paper towel because we want as much moisture to be removed and I had one I made actually several days ago that's been in the refrigerator. So this is probably the driest surface. And I'm going to take my red paint, which is over here, and I just paint, okay? And you don't want to put too much paint, um, but let's try that and see what we get. And you put it down quickly. If you too put too much paint, the potato tends to slide and blur. And then to lift it up, I hold the paper and lift. And there's the result. Now there's something you can always do with potato prints. You can keep on printing. So I'm gonna do it again. And you get a very different look. There's spots where the paint didn't show up. I'm having some paint that gathered there. Potato prints aren't perfect. That's part of their charm. They show you sometimes the surface of the potato. Um, you get ab haphazard mistakes that I like to think can be made into beautiful oops, which is a book by Barney Salzberg. How when you make mistakes, you can often remedy them and make them into something lovely. Now, I'm going to do a few more. Let me try the acorn. Now this one I'm going to do in two colors. So I'm going to use some orange paint and I'll do that for the shape of the acorn. Now acorns aren't orange, though sometimes they're sitting in orange leaves. And I think I'll make the top of it green, the little part that's like a cap or a hat now, okay, if you put too much paint, you can always blot it on a paper towel. But let's see how this comes out. I put it down, I hold it. Sometimes you press to make sure, and then lift. And there's my acorn. And if I make, let's see, well, I won't make a second one. 
I think I'm going to try these. This is like a little flower shape and a little sort of French, like fleur-de-lis diamond. I think I'll do that in, what color should I use? I think I'll do that in blue. Okay, and I'll do the flower shape in orange. Now, now I'm going to show you something. I'm going to blot it on my paper towel because I think I have a bit too much ink. So let me move these potatoes and I'm going to get a sheet that I can, that's fresh. And here it is. And I'm going to just go like this on the paper towel. Oh, that came out very well. And this is one of those nice mistakes. Paper towels are an interesting surface to print on too. They have a texture and a pattern that shows up. Now, oops, I'm gonna do it very, now that came out very faintly because most of the ink was already used up. But sometimes you might want that effect I'm going to do it one more time with a little bit more ink, putting it on, okay, and, okay. Now you can also print on cloth or canvas, but I'm not doing that today. Ooh, I had a lot of paint, so it slid. That's all right. Lift up, and there we go. Now you could make a pattern. I'll do that, let's see. I'm gonna print, maybe I'll do it upside down. And you could repeat it. So, oops, and my blue paint, where'd it go? There it is. Okay, here it goes. And I'm going to turn it upside down this time so that the colors will be reversed. And then I'll do one more. Do one more even. So there's my pattern. Now, the strawberry was one that came out very well when we did it in two colors. So I'm going to paint the strawberry red, which they are, and I'm gonna make the little green stem green. Just wanna get the ink nice and even. And here's a green stem. All right, and let's go. Press down. Pretty good. Here's another one. And as you see, the spot in the center didn't show up very well, but that's okay because that is the nature of potato prints. Now, there's one that I thought came out really well when I did many colors, and it's a large flower, and I'm going to use as many colors as I can. I'm going to do the orange center, like a big dot, and then I'm going to do the petals in different colors. I think I'll add some yellow, and I'm going to add some teal blue And then I will add some pink because that's a nice color in flowers. And maybe I'll do two pinks. And then let's see what I'll do next. I think I will do the metallic blue or the glittery blue. So there's my flower and there's lots of ink on there because when you put five drops, you get a lot. So I might blot it first really quickly. And now, let's go. Ooh. And there it is. So, my sort of pansy with five colors. And um, I thought that looked really nice. Now I'm going to do the letter one. Now you could write a whole book if you had could fit all, the whole alphabet on your potatoes. I just have the letter Y. I'm going to use this nice blue metallic. Let's see how it comes out. There 
it is. So these come out great, I think. So I want you to have a lot of fun. And if you don't have cookie cutters, in the next video I make, we're going to make potato prints without cookie cutters. We're going to use just the round shape of the potato, or we might use our knife and cut them into, let's see what I've got. This is an old one. It looks rounded, but you might cut them into stripes, or you might make a triangle. And in that video, I'm also going to show you a project I made that goes beyond this one. So here's all the potatoes I made without cookie cutters. As you can see, I just put paint on the round surface and then I cut them out. And I was inspired by a book called Potato Pants by Laurie Keller, published by Macmillan. And this book is a very fun book. And it gave me the idea of adding pants to the potatoes. And then we made, I made a book, two different kinds of books. I even made puppets. So join me in the second video when I can show you the next steps you can take. Bye.